1973, Muhammad Ali was in the hospital healing from a broken jaw, courtesy of the great heavyweight Ken Norton. Ali's loss against the fairly unknown master boxer had shocked the world and stopped Ali's iconic comeback in his tracks. His voice silenced for the first time in his life. Ali had been recovering from surgery when he received an anonymous note. It read, The butterfly has lost its wings. The bee has lost its sting. You are through, you loud mouth braggart. Your mouth has been shut for all times. It's a great day for America. You're finished. Ali had taken the note and posted it up on the wall of his gym. He would look at it every day as he prepared his mind and body for what was sure to be a difficult rematch. In their first fight, Norton had taken control from the very first round by out-jabbing Ali. The credit for this belongs to Eddie Futch, Norton's coach. Futch realized that Ali flared his right hand each time he jabbed. So, he told Norton to jab with him. However, it was Norton who had noticed on his own that Ali's pack twitched each time he was about to punch. With his insane speed and reflexes, Norton had been able to use this tendency to time Ali. To make things even worse for the ex-champion, Norton's cross-guard defense was catching most of the jabs that Ali did manage to fire off scot-free. With Ali's jab rendered near obsolete, Norton had outboxed one of the greatest boxers to ever live. But that was only half of the story. The other half was Norton's relentless bodywork, which had sapped Ali's strength and herded him into corners time and time again. At some point, Norton had slammed a tremendous right into Ali's jaw, shattering it. No one knows exactly when, but we do know it had been bothering Ali since at least the 7th. Despite this, Ali had rallied time and time again, tagging Norton with long-range jabs and angling in power punches. When Ali danced at a distance, he was too far off angle for Norton to counter, and too sideways for him to time him off of tells. This had evened out the fight. Until Norton had surged forward in the very last round, outlasting Ali and leaving no doubt as to who deserved the win. After the fight, something funny happened. For the first time in ages, Ali was furious. He remembered how it felt before he was champion, how it felt to be young and hungry. Once again, he felt he had something to prove, admitting that those who hate me sometimes inspire me the most, as long as I know they're out there. Half the battle would be in the gym, Ali would train out in the woods, avoid all distractions, and get into the prime physical condition necessary when facing elite opposition. The rest would depend on strategy, ensuring that Norton would not be able to effectively use the techniques that had sapped Ali's stamina and killed his legs. After six long months of recovery and hard work, the night arrived. The future of the heavyweight division and the fate of the world's most influential champion all rested on this one fight. Ali danced in place, chomping at the bit to pay Norton back for the humiliation of their last encounter. Like a stallion galloping forward at the sound of a battle horn, Ali charged out to mid-ring. Already he seemed far more aggressive than usual, cutting angles and fainting to set up well-loaded power punches. But although Ali was one of the most deceptive fighters to ever live with his erratic rhythm, desynchronized footwork, and bizarre head movement making him a nightmare to predict, Norton was having no problems figuring him out. 
The man known as Black Hercules timed the greatest hooks and beat them with tighter hooks. Then intercepted Ali's cross with a swatting right of his own. Ali's big problem was that his jab was the cornerstone of his offense. But Norton could brush it off like a speck of dust on his shoulder. And because of this, the rest of Ali's power punches became much easier to read and punish. To make matters worse for Ali, Norton's unusual, staggered rhythm was actually confounding him. Norton slipped, ducked, and pulled away from Ali's punches. He even taunted and showboated mid-round after Ali failed to pull him into a wind-up uppercut. One bright spot for Ali was that Norton was having a little trouble leading the action. Ali able to dance out of corners and trick him into missing his mark. The first round was in the books, and both men had shown solid defense, but ineffective offense. Of course, the knight was very young. Things became more hectic over the next few rounds. Unlike their first encounter, Ali gave up on exchanging center ring early in the fight. He instead circled at a distance. Norton plowed forward, a whirlwind of whipping jabs lashing out at the former Marine. But he weathered the storm, bracing himself against the blows raining down on him. Ali was as elusive and fast as lightning, but Norton would ride the lightning back staying ahead of Ali's punches to evade and dispel the force. Norton was a force of nature himself, a spewing volcano whose heat would catch up and overtake you no matter how fast you ran. But Ali had learned his lesson when it came to languishing on the ropes, when circling and jabbing at long range failed to keep Norton at bay. Ali would tie him up, then wrestle to reposition himself back to safety. Norton could usually touch Ali no more than once before getting smothered, then turned, or shoved away. This was Ali's first line of defense, and so far, it was holding. Norton took a more nuanced approach in round 4. Rather than rely exclusively on catching Ali with wide looping shots that corralled him to the ropes, Norton instead worked his way in with subtle feints and head movement. The closer range left Norton more vulnerable to taking punches flush to the face. But it also granted him more opportunities to land his own shots before Ali had time to angle out. But Ali didn't seem too concerned about Norton's crisp, lashing jabs instead paying special attention to the hand responsible for shattering his jaw in their first encounter. Rather than retract his jab, Ali would use it to stifle Norton's rear hand. There were times Norton's head was too tempting a target, and when Ali did take the bait, he usually found himself caught on a hook. This same scenario played out just before the bell sounded the end of the round. Norton timed a beautiful roundhouse right, reminiscent of the punch that had forced the rambunctious and verbose Ali to stay silent for months. And now Norton yelled in Ali's face, and Ali just acknowledged the punch with the nod. For the first time ever, Ali would let his fists alone do the talking. Oh, I say that Kenny Norton yelled at Ali after he hit Ali with that right hand. Right. I don't know what he yelled, but I, I'm sure that Kenny was pleased with himself. In the fifth, it was Al Lee who changed strategy, but not necessarily by choice. So far, Ali had been fairly disciplined about using collar ties and overhooks to quickly smother Norton's work when he got too close. But now, Ali's dancing had slowed to the point that Norton could get right up in his face, and Al Lee couldn't spend the entire night stifling the action and still hope to come out on top. So he instead fought fire with fire, stopping short and rebounding back to run Norton into shots any time he was in danger of getting cornered. Once Norton was occupied with defense, Ali could angle out with footwork 
and frames. This was Ali's second line of defense, and it was working incredibly well. Except for the minor fact that Norton did not seem at all bothered by the large majority of Ali's punches. So much so that he seemed happy to take a few just so long as he was able to drive Ali to the ropes and give a few back. And eventually, this strategy paid off. Finally, Ali stopped dancing and squared up to trade. After a brief exchange, Ali seemed no worse for wear and easily found the exit ramp back to mid-ring. But rather than play it safe all night, he fired off a right. Norton crouched underneath, and Ali connected with a whipping left hook that turned his chin. Norton's response was to completely ignore it and land a thudding body blow. He ducked under Ali's rear hook and landed another, shearing even deeper into the ex-champion's stomach. Ali tried again, and again Norton timed a counter. At the very last moment, Ali lowered his guard to prevent what he thought was a body shot, and instead took a sharp hook to the temple. Norton now went on the offensive, ironically giving Ali an opportunity to escape. But again, the greatest chose to press the issue, and again, he was treated to the exact same counter. As if to emphasize the shot, the bell rang out. In round five, Ali had tried out his third line of defense, abandoning mobility to outbox Norton with his back against the ropes. And just as in their first bout, it had not gone well. For now, Ali would have to rely on staying mobile. Norton would only continue surging forward like a cascading flash flood. Ali would have to wade through the harsh current or risk sinking into deep waters. So Ali tried to keep his feet active in the sixth. But he seemed to be gradually losing steam, slowing down and fighting in brief, sputtering bursts. Norton barreled forward at full speed, his jab shooting out like a well-oiled piston. But thankfully for Ali, Norton got a little too heated. Although he couldn't seem to miss with his jab, his over-eager power punches were wild and not well set up, and this rare lack of discipline very likely saved Ali. Throughout the last minute of the round, Ali punished Norton's aggression with well-placed hooks and crosses. In a rare reversal of expectations, Ali's opponent was outjabbing him while Ali evened out the round by landing fierce power punches. The ex-champ built on his offensive rally in the seventh, finding the mark with his jabs as well. But Norton didn't even seem to acknowledge them, marching forward with the same steady pace as a supernatural killer in a horror flick. Norton seemed to know he would catch up, know that Ali would slow, even as a young man, Ali couldn't dance a full 12 rounds non-stop. The greatest paused for a brief moment to fire off his lead hand, and that was all it took. Norton countered with a much heavier hook, the same counter that had worked so well earlier in the fight, and then harassed Ali until he had him pinned against the ropes once again. This time, Norton was able to get to work, shoving Ali, then fading back when he attempted to tie him up. This cleared space for a tremendous uppercut. Ali shelled up behind a high guard, his fourth and very last line of defense. One day, this strategy would become his most valuable weapon and help him to pull off a miracle. But as of now, if Ali stayed walled up, all it would do is cost him the fight. Ali took the hint and went back to wrestling to escape his all too dire situation. Still too tired to dance for long, Ali went back to fighting, but whether he stood his ground and threw bombs, or barricaded himself behind a fortress, Norton still found his target with startling accuracy. Just over halfway through the fight, Ali's legs had run out on him, and this continued into the eighth. It was clear that from now on, Ali would need to slow down at certain points throughout the remainder of the rounds, 
Although he arguably had the edge with his long-range jabbing tactics, the fight was close enough that the current scoring would ultimately depend on the personal preferences of the judges. Put simply, if Ali hoped to win, he would have to continue dancing as long as he could and convincingly beat Norton at mid-range when he couldn't. So Ali continued to run Norton into shots and did much better at picking the right moments to briefly stay put before angling out or clinching. But when Ali jabbed, Norton continued to cross block and throw the punches away. It's hard to understand just how incredibly exhausting this can be unless you've experienced the arm numbing tactic for yourself. And while Ali was landing plenty of flurries, Norton was busy sneaking in body shots. Each and every body blow that landed would make it harder and harder for Ali to keep moving the remainder of the fight. Muhammad once more paid the price for holding his ground near the end of the round. Norton pulled and countered Ali's uppercut with a lead hook. Uppercuts would traditionally be a great tool to stop Norton from bull rushing in. But the Marine had been startlingly adept at returning to an upright posture to evade them. And now he added on a counter, timing Ali's uppercut for a lead hook. He next followed it up with a tearing right. Once more, Norton harassed Ali the remainder of the round. And once more, he punctuated it with a hard right. Into the ninth, Ali's flared right hand was still costing him. Now that he had slowed, Norton was winning the jab war just as in their first fight. And although Ali was landing with good rights, Norton was pulling back on them to dispel the force of the punch. Far from a young man, Ali no longer seemed to have the speed to catch opponents entirely unaware. Meanwhile, Norton caught Ali with yet another one of the roundhouse rights that he seemed to have such a hard time noticing. He then dodged his punches as if Ali was the slowest heavyweight to ever compete in the division. Norton cornered his rival repeatedly, pounding his midsection, timing his footwork, intercepting his head movement, and always always punishing Ali for his jabs. Though the fight had started out well, now everything appeared to be crumbling and falling apart for the once great champion. Norton could not seem to miss. Had the note been right, was Ali really finished? But boxing is about risk and reward, and a tried and true method to stop someone hitting you in boxing and in life is to hit them back even harder. Ali fired off the same head tracking one too he had landed earlier, but this time the impact was solid. Norton staggered and finally backed off. In that one instant, Ali had put himself back in the fight. Perhaps the butterfly's wings were tattered, but the bee could still sting. And he stung again moments later. Norton fired right back with whipping jabs. Ali pulled and tried to counter right, but Norton pulled and fired his own counter right, which Ali then pulled. Rather than continue marrying each other into infinity, Ali backed off, then rebounded forward with a 1-2. Norton took most of the force, but still tried to counter. The skill and bravado of these two warriors was sending the crowd to their feet, and the announcer exclaimed, Fight of the year! I'm the fight of the year! As if to justify the title, the two engaged in a beautiful back and forth until the very end of the round. The crowd went insane, in awe of the awesome display of will and talent playing out in front of them. Two seconds, one! Near the start of round 10, Ali strafed left, fainting twice to work his way into position to land a close hook. 
However, Norton was not about to let Ali halt the momentum he had been building over the last few rounds. He had realized that the best way to stop Ali's attempts to duck in and hold was to fire off a rear uppercut the moment he tried it. This had been forcing Ali to keep upright and honest. And Norton had only gotten better at timing the shot as the rounds went on. So now he could capitalize on Ali's more upright posture with looping lead hooks and roundhouse rights. The 10th was a complete and total disaster for Ali. If something didn't change, the judges' points wouldn't matter at all because Norton would settle the matter for them. Ali did what he always did in these situations. He dug deep and found the will to fight even harder than before. He now threw with authority and intent making Norton work for every single inch he moved forward. This probably still would not have been enough, but Ali was one of the smartest boxers to ever live, and he was making adjustments to his clinch work and close range tactics on the fly. He started anticipating Norton's uppercut each time he leaned in close, and midway through the round, he started pressing in to bait Norton's punches on purpose. A heavy right hand whipped Norton's head back, Ken would later point out this punch as one that really hurt him. Although he played it off so well, it was impossible to tell in the moment. This to and fro movement did not stop all of Norton's shots from finding home. However, the tactic was enough to keep him guessing, to the point where the Marine was thrown off balance from missing at times. Near the end bell, it was Al Lee who put Norton in the corner. The fight was razor close. The outcome balanced on a knife's edge. They say that iron sharpens iron. In their first fight, Norton had pounded Ali until he cracked under the strain. But through that loss, Ali had grown stronger, forging his body into something close to the weapon it had once been. So now, just as in the first round, Ali took center ring and stood his ground. But this time, something was different. This time, it was Norton who was melting under the heat. Not only was Ali in far better shape than he had been, but his tactics had changed as well. While Norton had been sapping Ali's stamina, Ali had been stealthily doing the same. He had leaned on Norton each time he pressed close, making him bear his weight. He had made Norton miss by miles, then goaded him into chasing him around the ring for 11 long rounds, eating punches all the while. He made Norton fight for every inch of distance he closed, then pushed him right back to the beginning each time. Ali had adapted, and because he had allowed himself to bend while Norton stayed rigid, it was Norton who was cracking under the strain of 11 hard rounds. Now Ali was picking him apart with lightning fast flurries. He did not wait until he was cornered to tie Norton up, but instead pushed him back each time he got too close claiming the center of the ring. Norton took blow after blow. He never stopped moving forward, but he did not land anything significant until the last minute of the round. Ali danced back and scored a tremendous one too. Norton again responded with the same. But Norton had far past the point where he was capable of silencing the once great champion. The moments passed. The bell sounded. The bell. And Ali still had his legs and his voice. The announcer read out the judge's score, proclaiming a split decision for Muhammad Ali. The first thing Ali did was praise Norton for his impressive skills. Oh, that is a threat to the title. What I hold it, who holds it? He's the next best in the world to myself. His sheer talent, incredible ring craft, and odd style tailor fit to foil Ali's had made for two legendary back and forth battles. As is so often the case, 
failure had been his greatest teacher. Yet Ali seemed somber to receive such a double-edged lesson. He still had his near superhuman skills, but to take back the title, he would have to defeat Joe Frazier in a rematch, and then wrest his belt back from the silent giant, George Foreman. When it came to pro boxing, burnout was the name of the game. But his name was Muhammad Ali. If you're interested in supplementing your own training, you can check out my books on power, footwork, and defense, linked below. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.